a great clipping here from Foreign Affairs, okay, uh, called the Democratic, the Coming Democratic Revival, and this was from Madeleine Albright, the former Secretary of State under Obama, I believe, right? And she said that we're going to see actually a, a fight against authoritarianism, auto, authoritarianism, right? And in many cases, she says, autocrats have been failing to deliver. That is certainly true, again, for Turkey, for Brazil, for the US, uh, and for many other places. And she says democracy is not a dying cause. In fact, it's poised for a comeback. I think that's something that gives me hope when we think about democracy and where we're going with this. And uh, definitely a key point. Here's another interesting stat from 2020 World Population Report. Of course, kind of not, you know, not really recent, but this is a recent study I have. So the 10 most democratic nations in the world, and, and you can take a look at this list. Right? So what in the world is going on here, right? The Nordic countries, Ireland, Canada, Switzerland, New Zealand, right? the Kiwiland. What do they have on us, right? I mean, I live in Switzerland, so I'm one of those. I'm very happy about that. This is one of the key points I have in the discussion. What is happening in those countries as opposed to the US? And the, uh, no surprise here, the world's most happiest countries, they tend to be kind of the same. Of course, it's kind of a strange thing that if you would ask somebody about in Finland, if they're the happiest country in the world, they wouldn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and many of us don't think of Finns as being particularly happy, but of course, the definition of happiness is a big deal, right? So the 10 most democratic state nations, what can we learn from them, right? And here's one thing from Switzerland, I think we can learn from is trust in government and the confidence in national government. Here in Switzerland, uh, throughout the entire pandemic, you know, we had Switzerland coming up with unique and different rules and not like Germany necessarily forcing people into submission, but asking for people's compliance. And the funny thing is here in Switzerland, there's only seven and a half million people. It's like, I don't know, one third of New York City, right? But still, you know, we, we trust the government. I think this is one of the key issues about democracy, trusting government and trusting public officials. Like here in Switzerland, we don't have a prime minister. Right? We have seven people who lead the state. Right? And we have a president that's kind of like the official face of Switzerland. And of course, yes, we're, we're a rich country. And I was born in Germany, so I do know the difference. Right? But very important, as Melaine Albright again said, democracy is both fragile and resilient. I think we should not give up too quickly on democracy and what it can do if it's, if it's applied the right way. And again, like I said earlier, this, this perception of the future, you know, I keep saying in many of my speeches, um, you know, the, as you look at the future, so you act, and as you act, so you become. We should look at the future as, as being hopeful, right? Because this is also the important thing, as I said earlier, trust, right? How, do you trust your government? I can say wholeheartedly here in Switzerland, I do. In Germany, I, I think I now do. Right? And what's happening with democracy? I think we need a certain amount of trust in government for that to actually come through. Great example here in Switzerland, the Abstimmung, the voting that we do every three months here, a big letter, uh, almost a parcel arrives in our mailbox, and we vote on everything from the size of a broad voice to the nuclear disarmament program and banking laws and everything, right? And everybody does it. And how much time does it take? Well, every three or four months, yeah, two or three hours. That's basic democracy, and that works well here, but of course it's also tedious and slow and, you know, re repetitious and rolling back things that were decided before. Jeff Sparrow said the other day, democracy isn't an institution, it's a practice, and it becomes stronger through use. We have to remind ourselves of this. We have to practice democracy. We have to put time and work into democracy.